So this video is on uh, the principle of operations or the optical principle of a sextant. If this is the first video you're watching in this series um, on sextant, that's fine. I'll add, I've made a number of videos on sextant and I will provide you with the links on those videos. So please make sure that you watch those videos as well to enhance your knowledge about the sextant because this video only focuses on the single topic of the principle of operation or the optical principle on which the sextant is constructed. Alright, so basically what we'll be doing is we'll be talking about uh, some laws of reflection based on which the sextant is constructed and through animations I'll show you how it all works together with a sextant and uh, when you are actually obtaining the altitude of a sextant, what is happening. So the, the main uh, law behind the, the optical principle behind the sextant is that uh, if a ray of light is reflected from two mirrors in succession the angle between the first and the last direction of the rays is twice the angle between the two mirrors so when we talk about two mirrors in the context of a sextant we are talking about the index mirror and the horizon mirror now if you don't know the parts of the sextant i'll suggest that you watch my video on parts of the sextant make sure that you're familiar with what a sextant is and what are the different parts and what is it called uh, in case you find this video to be overwhelming uh, and if you are not familiar with the sextant this video will not work for you so please watch my other videos as well and make sure you're familiar with the sextant before you try to understand the principle of operation behind a sextant so for those of you who don't know what sextant is sextant is basically a, a bridge equipment used on the ship it's an equipment used on the ship to obtain the altitude of celestial bodies also be used to obtain the vertical section angle of a lighthouse or the horizontal section angles between two structures like a lighthouse and an island so anyhow um, I will not go into those uh, details you can watch my videos to understand those details I will come back to the principle of operation so behind the main optical principle there are two laws of reflection that you have to understand to understand how a section works so the first law of reflection states that when a light strikes a plane mirror the angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection the second law states that the angle of incidence denoted by theta i the normal which is like the perpendicular and the angle of reflection denoted by theta r all should be lying in the same plane so if these two law works these are the laws behind the working of a sextant so if you guys didn't understand what all this means, don't worry about it. I'll show it to you through animations now, what each of this law mean. So you can now visualize on uh, what this actually means in practice. All right. So let's get familiar with the terminology first and then I'll show you how the two laws work and what do they actually mean. So let's assume this is a plane mirror. Kept vertically, of course. And the ray of light from the sun strikes the plane mirror in this case the ray of light or the blue arrow here that is striking the mirror becomes the incident ray after striking the mirror when the ray of light is reflected that becomes the reflected ray so the green arrow here becomes the reflected ray the angle that the mirror makes with the perpendicular becomes the So the perpendicular between the perpendicular line on the mirror and the angle that it makes with the mirror held vertically becomes the normal. Now if you have to understand the two laws, the first law of reflection that we stated before was that when a ray of light strikes a plane mirror, the angle of incidence becomes equal to the angle of reflection. So what did that mean is that if the blue arrow is the incident ray, in the angle that it makes with the normal becomes the angle of incidence and that's denoted by theta i similarly if the green arrow is a reflected ray then the angle that it makes with the normal becomes the angle of reflection denoted by theta i so based on the first law of reflection when a ray of light is striking a plane mirror the angle of incidence becomes equal to the angle of reflection. 
so theta i will be equal to theta i moving on to the second law of reflection which stated that the angle of incidence the normal and the angle of reflection should all lie in the same plane so what this basically means is that the angle of incidence denoted by theta i the angle of reflection denoted by theta r and the normal all should lie in the same plane so the incident ray because it when it struck the mirror it was reflected it didn't go through the mirror if it had gone through the mirror then it would not have been in the same plane the reflected ray would not have been there it would not have been in the same plane for it to be in the same plane you see what is happening here the incident ray is striking the mirror it's getting reflected and the normal the all those rays are all in the same plane so this is what it meant visually now these principles are used behind the construction of a sextant so basically by changing the angle of incidence you can measure the sextant altitude how does that happen is now imagine the mirror that we showed you before becomes the index mirror of a sextant so see if a light is striking the index mirror and if the angle of incidence has to be equal to the angle of reflection in this case here when the light is striking from the sun onto the mirror the angle of incidence is 45 degrees the angle of reflection is also 45 degrees they are all in the same plane so the two laws are obeyed similarly if the sun's altitude is much lower then the light when it strikes from the sun still after reflection the angle of incidence equals to the angle of reflection and all three that is the angle of incidence the angle of reflection and the normal are still in the same plane so what happened between the two slides is in one the section the altitude of the sun was much higher in the next one the altitude was much lower but it doesn't hamper the operation the principles of laws of reflection remain the same now these are the laws we will be using in a sextant so what happens here now now if i change the angle of the mirror the law still remains the same because the angle at which the incident ray is striking and the angle of reflection they are still equal and they are still in the same plane right now let's put all this information in the context of a sextant this is is what a sextant is the above mirror you see is the index mirror the lower mirror you see is the horizon mirror now how do you normally see an object you can see an object when the light strikes the object and is reflected into your eyes only then you can see the object right so in a dark room if it's absolutely dark because there is no light striking the object and getting reflected into your eyes you can't see anything for you to be able to see anything through the human eye the light has to strike the object and then get reflected into your eyes so that you can see it and similarly this is the principle of a sextant now let's see how a sextant works using these two laws of reflection so if you see through the telescope and through the glass of the horizon glass so the horizon mirror is comprised of two parts horizon mirror and horizon glass so if you see through the horizon glass you can see through the telescope through the horizon glass you can see but for you to be able to measure the altitude you have to use the laws of reflection where the light will strike the index mirror get reflected into the horizon mirror and then into your eyes through the telescope so here the index is kept at the index arm of the sextant is kept at 0 degrees and 0 minutes as you move the sextant you will realize that we use the laws of reflection to be able to see an object right so if at 0 degrees and 0 minutes you see through the telescope and you are viewing the horizon this is what you will see basically the light is reflected of the horizon goes into the index mirror gets reflected into the horizon mirror the horizon mirror then reflects it through the telescope into your eyes and this is what you see through the telescope all right so half of it is through the horizon mirror and the half of it is through the horizon glass now what happens when you are measuring the altitude of a celestial body like the sun and you are trying to bring its reflected image onto the horizon you can't see it at 0 degrees and 0 minutes because the sextant altitude is not 0 degrees it could be it is going to definitely going to be more than 0 degrees the altitude could be 30 degrees 40 degrees 20 degrees so if i use the same law here 
I don't adjust the angle at which the mirror or the light strikes the mirror, I will not be able to see the celestial body, although I will still be able to see the horizon. So at 0 degrees and 0 minutes, when the sextant is held at 0 degrees and 0 minutes, if I look through the telescope, all I will see is the horizon through the horizon glass. But because I want to measure the altitude of the celestial body, which is not at 0 degrees and 0 minutes, I need to adjust the index mirror in such a way that the light strikes the index mirror using the laws of reflection then it strikes the horizon mirror and into your eyes and that is the first law that I started, talked about and for it all the rays should be in the same plane so let's see if how what happens here if I adjust the index arm in such a way that the angle of the mirror is changed so here now the sextant is held at 40 degrees and assuming that is the altitude of the sun you can see because I changed the angle of the index mirror only the horizon mirror is still the same, the index mirror angle is not changed, the light from the sun strikes the mirror and gets reflected into the horizon mirror and then into the eyes and now I can see the reflected image of the sun onto the horizon because assuming that the sun's altitude was 40 degrees. So what I only did from my first slide to the next slide is here you can see the angle of, in angle of the index mirror is different and at this angle I cannot see the sun. But when I move the index arm, the angle of the index mirror changed in such a way that the light reflected now from the sun strikes the index mirror, gets reflected into the horizon mirror and then through the telescope into the eye that I can see the reflected image of the sun and the horizon all together at the same time at 40 degrees altitude. So how does a sextant measure angles of 120 degrees? Although the arc of a sextant about 60 degrees. So if you see this arc here or this shape here, this is the shape of the frame of a sextant. Now the sextant gets its name from the fact that it is one sixth of a circle. So if a circle is 360 degrees, the frame of a sextant is one sixth of a circle. One sixth of 360 degrees is 60 degrees. So although the angle through which the index arm can move is only 60 degrees, the sextant is actually capable of measuring angles up to 120 degrees. And this happens because remember the first law that I told you and that is not a law of reflection, the basic optical principle on which the sextant is constructed is that if a ray of light is reflected from two mirrors in a succession, those two mirrors can be the index mirror and the horizon mirror, the angle between the first and the last direction of the rays is twice the angle between the two mirrors. And that is the optical principle we'll be using to understand how a sextant can measure angles up to 120 degrees although the frame is only at an angle of 1 sixth of a circle that is 60 degrees. Alright, so this is the law of optic we will be using to understand how this happens. So the law of optic says if a ray of light is reflected from two mirrors in succession that is if one is an index mirror and the other one is a horizon mirror and say if I adjust the angle of the index mirror by moving the index path length in such a way that the light strikes the index mirror, gets reflected into the horizon mirror and then into the eyes of the observer. You can see although the light was striking at 20 degrees, gets reflected at 20 degrees, but when it strikes the horizon mirror, it is at about 40 degrees, which is twice the angle of incident ray. So although the two laws of reflection are being followed here, the law of optics is going to use this principle to be able to calculate the section angle up to 120 degrees. So now you can see that although the angle of incidence on the index mirror and the angle of reflection on the index mirror is 20 degrees, when it strikes the horizon mirror it is 40 degrees. So basically by adjusting the angle of the index mirror we can measure angles up to twice the value of the movement. So the law that said that the if ray of light is reflected to, from two mirrors in succession, the angle between the first and the last ray of direction is twice the angle between the two mirrors, this is what it meant. So although I move the index mirror only by an angle of 20 degrees, the angle between the first ray and the last reflected ray is twice.
all right and this is what is happening when every time you are moving the index bar clamp and you are moving the index bar you are basically adjusting the angle of the index mirror so what happens is the angle of incidence that first strikes the index mirror but the last ray of reflection which comes of the horizon mirror is twice its value that is why although your sextant frame is only up to 60 degrees and the angle of the movement is only 60 degrees you can still measure angles up to 120 degrees because of this law of optics so here you can see the angle of incidence initially and the reflection is 30 degrees but when it strikes the horizon mirror And that is why you can measure angles all the way up to 120 degrees if you move the sextant fully. Alright, so you only move the index mirror by 15 degrees of an angle, but you could measure the sun's altitude, which was at So hope this video was easy for you guys to understand. If you have any questions, please feel free to write to me in the comments. Um, why I try to talk less and show you animations is so that you can visualize what is happening because if I keep talking it's very theoretical and you guys will not really be able to visualize what is happening. So I thought it's better to use uh, animations and PowerPoint to show you what is happening here so, but still if you have any doubts on how the whole thing works and maybe if I was not very clear with my explanation please feel free to write to me in the comments and I'll be happy to address your doubts. I'll see you soon with my next video. Bye and thanks for watching.